Okay, here's a picture or some pictures of uh, what's happening with this problem. This is the graph of y equals x minus x squared, a downward opening parabola uh, with vertex right here. And we want to revolve this region uh, where the region is above the, the x-axis. We want to revolve that region about the line x equals 2. Now, when we use the shell method, your typical shells are parallel to the axis of revolution. So you know right away to draw a little, or at least mentally picture a little shell like that. And this picture here kind of shows you uh, many shells. And we're actually, when we do the integration from zero to one, we are creating infinitely many of these shells. And if you picture one of these shells, how do you find the volume of that shell? Well, it, it's uh, like a can, like this, that has a hole in the middle of it. And we know that the volume of a can is pi r squared times h, where h is the height of the shell. And the radius, well, that's the problem. That's, that's where this uh, average radius idea comes into play. The average radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to the center of your shell. So here's the setup for the definite integral. The question is, where does that come from? Um, and the two pi is in the two is introduced as part of finding the average radius. But in our case, the distance from here to here is always two. But we have to subtract this little distance right here to get the average radius for a typical shell. And then that little distance is x. That's where this two minus x comes from. That's the average radius for a typical shell. Of course, as we introduce other shells, that x changes, but the formula for the average radius to the center of that shell is still 2 minus x. And the height of the shell is just this x minus x squared. It's the function definition. So 2 pi times the definite interval from 0 to 1 of Height of the shell, average radius of the shell, thickness of the shell. That's the little what dx stands for. And if we do the definite integral from 0 to 1, we have, in effect, created infinitely many shells between 0 and 1. Now, how do you evaluate this definite integral? Well, you multiply these two binomials together. I'm not going to do it all here, but I'll give you an idea. Using FOIL 2x minus x squared, that's the outer product. Inner product is minus 2x squared. And then finally, minus x squared times minus x is plus x cubed. You can combine these two terms. So in the end, you get x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x, and that's what you find the antiderivative for. Raise the exponent by 1, multiply by the uh, reciprocal of the new exponent. Here you have my, minus 3 in front, but you raise the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. That's what you get. Raise the exponent by 1 becomes a 2 multiplied by 1 half or divide by 2. There's the antiderivative, which you want to evaluate from 0 to 1. And you want to multiply all that by 2 pi. OK, and that, that's where the pi over 2 comes from. Because if you put in 1 for x, you get 1 fourth. 0 for x, you get 0. So it's 2 pi over 4. Pi over two. There you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post a comment.